Hello Year 13. Um, today's lesson, um, which is lesson two in turning points in physics, is all about measuring the electronic charge and we will be looking at a very famous experiment by Robert Millikan, the famous Millikan oil drop experiment which was conducted in 1910 and it was used to measure the charge of the electron. Okay, so let's look at the first slide. So just to recap um, what J.J. Thompson uh, determined. He determined, well, he um, postulated the existence of the electron and he's given credit for discovering the electron. He used these um, discharge tubes like this one. We looked at this last lesson, but he used um, this type of discharge tube to measure the specific charge of the electron. He couldn't measure the charge of the electron because he, his method wouldn't allow him to, but he, he was able to measure the specific charge, which is E over M, the charge divided by the mass of an electron. Now, just to very quickly point out that the this particular experiment here does not use a hot cathode. Okay, it's just a cold cathode and the electron beam is because there's a very large voltage between the anode and cathode. Now, what Thomson did um, with this experiment was he measured the velocity of the electron beam um, by using two fields. He used um, an electric field and a magnetic field, and he adjusted both fields so that the cathode ray passed between them undeflected. Okay, because the electric field would try and deflect uh, the cathode ray, and so would the magnetic field. If you if you balance them and get them just right, you can you can have a cathode ray that passes through undeflected. And um, using the equations there in the box, you can see um, if we do this um, that we've got the magnetic force here, um, um, which is F equals B E V. B is the magnetic flux density, and we've got the electric force there, where E is the electric field strength. Equate those two, because if they're undeflected, those two forces must balance. So BEV equals EV. E cancels, and we're left with a velocity equaling the electric field strength divided by the magnetic flux density. Okay, so this is a useful equation. And we will be coming back to this one in this lesson when we look at other experiments conducted by Millikan. So hold that equation in your memory. So Thompson then um, was able to work out the specific charge of the electron. OK, so he, he, um, he went back to his um, electron gun at the beginning. So going back to that previous experiment, okay, let's just draw a little sketch of it here. Here is the tube that he used. You've got your anode there, you've got your cathode there. Okay, the electrons are accelerated across there. There, And we can say that the work done on the electron by the electric field, okay, is equal to the gain in kinetic energy. So, EV equals a half MV squared. Um, we can therefore see that EM equals E squared over 2VB squared because we replace the velocity with that equation. So this, this is as far as JJ Thompson got. He was able to um, work out the specific charge, but he couldn't get any further. His, his experiment didn't allow him to do that. Um, before we look at Millikan's experiment, um, we're going to look at the, the apparatus that we would now use in a school laboratory to work out the specific charge. This is what we call the fine beam tube. We've got one of these um, in Emmanuel. In fact, we've got a couple of them. It's an evacuated glass bulb, um, which means it's got no air in it. Um, let's have a look at the setup. 
we've got an electron gun here. This is your electron gun there. So we need to have a large voltage, um, up to 5,000 volts, between these two electrodes here. And they accelerate the electron from the cathode. OK, so let's find the cathode. Cathode is um, negatively charged here. It's a hot cathode. Hot cathode. OK. Um, and then the electron beam shoots across to the towards the anode. It's accelerated across there. OK. Um, we also have a small voltage here, 6.3 volts, and that is to heat up this um, cathode. There, there's a heater in there, and that, that causes thermionic emission of electrons. And that's where the electrons, they literally are liberated from the surface of the cathode because they're supplied with thermal energy, and that allows them to overcome the work function. And then they're accelerated across towards the anode. So this is the fine beam tube okay and you should become familiar with how it works now we can there's a couple of experiments that you can do with the fine beam tube um, and again if we were in the lab i would show you this um, let's have a look at the first experiment this is called magnetic deflection so in this experiment um, we are going to put the fine beam tube here this is the fine beam tube and we're going to place it inside uh, two Helmholtz coils. Now these Helmholtz coils, one on either side of the fine beam tube, they create a uniform magnetic field. Okay, so the electron beam uh, will be located within a uniform magnetic field. Now you can see that as the electron beam, well first thing to point out here is that the electron gun points upwards. It's called a tangential electron gun. It doesn't point across the tube. It points upwards there. And so we inject an electron beam at right angles to the field. And because you've studied magnetic fields already, you know that there is a force acting on the moving electrons, which is always at right angles. So I'll try and draw this. Um, I'm struggling with the pen here. Let's see. There's always a there's always a force going towards the center of the circle like that. So it provides the magnetic force provides a centripetal force. The electron beam therefore describes a circle. Okay, so we can use the formula for centripetal force mv squared over r, and we can equate that to the magnetic force BEV. Okay, so we've got circular motion happening here. Now we combine this um, with the fact that we know that the electron was accelerated. So going back to this idea that the electric field, which is inside the electron gun, the work done by the field equals the gain in kinetic energy. We combine these expressions, okay, one and two combine those to give our final expression here for the specific charge of the electron e over m equals 2va which is the anode voltage over b squared r squared so you should be able to um, derive that using equations one and two there it's a little bit tricky um, it's not necessarily straightforward but you should be able to derive e over m from those two expressions okay it's not complicated maths it's just there's a few stages to it okay so please have a go at doing that yourselves little challenge for you okay and a second experiment that we can do with the fine beam tube this time not a magnetic field this time an electric field okay so here's our fine beam tube we've got two parallel plates okay above and below the electron gun. The electron gun this time is not tangential. It's just going to fire electrons across like that. Um, as the electrons enter into the electric field, they experience a force. So this is an electron, so it's negatively charged. Here's the electron. 
it's going to be attracted upwards towards the positive plate. Now, the size of that force doesn't change. Okay, it accelerates, the electron will accelerate towards the positive plate, but its horizontal motion remains constant. It's not being accelerated there. So it's a parabolic path, isn't it? Parabolic path. So um, we can work out using, first of all, we know that the force on the electron is equal to the electronic force, so the electric field force. So that's EE. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Let's get rid of that. Let's go and put a proper color there. So working out the acceleration using F over M, we're going to use the, the force on the electron is the electric force. The um, electric field strength is V over D. Let's get a decent color. V equals V over D. That's the potential gradient. So we end up with an expression here for the acceleration as EV over MD. Now we can also determine the acceleration of the electron using SUVAT equations here. We can also use a SUVAT equation. We can measure the deflection of the electron as it comes out of the field, the vertical deflection. Um, we, can, we can say that that vertical deflection is equal to half a t squared. Now we can work out t because we know um, that it's the length of the field, so that's the horizontal length of the field divided by the velocity of the electron. The velocity of the electron is equal to E over B. So prior to this, uh, prior to applying the electric field, we've also applied a magnetic field to get zero deflection. And we've worked out in advance of this experiment, we've worked out the velocity by using E over B. So we can apply all of that. Um, OK, so we can put all this together to get an expression for the specific charge of the electron. So this experiment is a little bit more complicated. Again, you should be aware of it. You need to um, look in your physics book, make some notes on all of these experiments. OK, let's move on. Now we come to Millikan's oil drop experiment. This was revolutionary um, and enabled us to move beyond just measuring the specific charge to measuring the actual charge of the electrons. So how did he do it? What did Millikan do? He injected a fine spray of oil droplets here. Um, injecting this fine spray of oil droplets into a chamber. Okay, the oil droplets fell down into an electric field. Okay, now um, what Millikan did is he adjusted the strength of the electric field such that oil drops, some of the oil drops were held stationary in the field. And he was able to see this using this telescope over here. So when the oil drops are stationary, then we can say that the forces are balanced. The, now, what I haven't mentioned, uh, and I need to, is that the oil drops, as they come in, charge, they gain a charge by friction. So oil is an insulator. Um, when you rub an insulator, you charge it. You can, you can transfer electrons either onto it or away from it. Okay, so that's a bit like rubbing a plastic rod. Uh, we can we can transfer electrons across to it. Okay, and it becomes charged. And the same thing happens as these oil drops are sprayed into the chamber. They gain a charge. Some electrons are either rubbed onto or rubbed off the oil. Now, it'll just be one electron or two electrons or three electrons. Okay, so we know that there is a force acting on each oil drop because the oil drop is charged the electric force will be um, 
balancing it and balancing the weight of the oil drop. So if you can adjust the electric field strength, we can balance these two. Okay, and there we go. The electric force equals the weight, and we can get an expression there for the charge. However, we haven't moved that far forward because we've still got the mass in there. We don't know what the mass of the um, oil drop is. So Millikan um, repeated the experiment, but he took off the electric field. And he just allowed, so he switched off the electric field. Okay. He allowed the oil drops to fall slowly at terminal velocity through the air inside the chamber. And when there's no electric field, there are three forces acting on the oil drop. There's a buoyancy force or displacement force, up thrust um, is the other name for it, up thrust. There's a drag force and there's weight. Now we're going to ignore the up thrust. OK, the displaced air doesn't really weigh anything, uh, so we're going to ignore it. We're just going to consider the drag force, the viscous drag force and the weight. We use Stokes law, which you may have come across, I believe, already. Uh, 6 pi eta RV, eta is the viscosity of air, equal to the weight. Now, what we've got here is the volume times the density times G. So that's the weight of the oil drop. So using this, we can determine the radius. The radius of the oil drop can be determined. We know the um, density of oil, so we can work out the mass, calculate the mass of each drop. And therefore, you can calculate the charge on each drop as well. And what Millikan noticed was that the charges on these oil drops were quantized and that means that they were always a multiple of 1.6 times 10 to the 9 minus 19. So either two times that or three times that or four times that. So Millikan was able to determine the electronic charge using this experiment. Now the good news is students will not have to consider calculations involving viscosity and density to determine the mass of the oil drops but you will have to consider the previous slide where we balanced the electric force against the weight. You do need to know that. Okay, um, final slide. Um, there he is, Millikan receiving his Nobel Prize in 1925. So he successfully gained a precise result for the charge in an electron in 1910. His work was recognized in 1925 by the Nobel Committee and he was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics. Another clever gentleman um, who made a great leap forward in our understanding of physics. Thank you for listening. Um, I am going to put some past paper questions as an assignment onto its learning. I would like you to do that. Um, on Monday as part of the lesson. Okay, There was a little bit of confusion, um, I think, last week, and maybe I didn't make it clear that some, this work is to be done. It's lesson work. It's not just homework. Please try and do it, if you can, on the Monday or the Tuesday. That gives me a chance to have a look at it, mark it, give you some feedback, and get your engagement score into, its, into school base. Okay, so um, you've got plenty of other things for homework. Uh, you've got these um, prescribed tasks that Mr. Kernahan has put together for you. So that's really your homework. And the assignment work is classwork. Lovely. Thank you for listening. Bye bye.